walking around it and she's someone said well you can have mine she looked over at me and she said I really like that one and took my necklace and it was yeah and it was it, it looked great on stage for her but ask did he shall receive seek and he shall find knock and the door shall be open unto you excuse me but it's yours all right, ladies and gentlemen, it is 6.30 Eastern, Eastern, 6.31 Central Time, 7.31 Eastern. We are about to get started. Welcome, 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 everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you across the world. Welcome to our Integrity Leadership Call. We have a special, special call on this evening, and we have a special guest who will be speaking, and I'm about to introduce her right now. Mrs. Douglas is the CEO of Prosperity Financial Services, LLC, whose vision is to help individuals and business owners obtain financial freedom. Prosperity Financial Services, LLC offers consulting services, tax and IRS resolution services, life insurance and investment policies, and business services, including business formation, financial strategies, and bookkeeping services. Mrs. Douglas is a certified public accountant with a BSBA and an MBA in accounting. Sadia is a member of the AICPA, VSCPA, and the Richmond Association of Government Accountants, where she served as president of the Richmond chapter. She has helped establish nonprofits and has served on several boards. Mrs. Douglas served as the chief financial officer for two multi-million dollar organizations. She was responsible for financial and strategic planning, forecasting, budgeting, financial and human capital management and capital projects. Please welcome Mrs. Sadia Douglas with her presentation, The Debt-Free Roadmap. Thank you. Can I get share access? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. How is everyone tonight? Wonderful. Okay, let's see if I can share it down. I can. All righty, can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. All righty, so this is interactive. This is family style. Feel free to ask questions um, and make comments. We're here to discuss it as well as to kind of lay out the, uh, the roadmap. As you can see, I'm excited to be here tonight. You know, I had to put on a little bit of makeup just to make it happen. Um, tonight, we'll be talking about the debt-free roadmap, helping you to achieve financial freedom. Prosperity Financial Services, you know, to me, that's our vision, our goal to help you achieve financial freedom. And in doing that, we have to talk about your credit. We have to talk about debt. Um, so I wanted to go in and just kind of talk a little bit about the credit unions, as you can see them on your screen. Um, they have different ways that they monitor and update our scores, which is real important. It's depending upon which bank we're with, which scoring model they use, and which credit reporting agency they're going through, that determines um, how our score is updated, whether it's weekly, monthly, or quarterly. Um, one of the important things that everyone should know is how to um, talk to the credit reporting agencies in a way they understand, which is by sending letters. If you send a dispute letter, these are the addresses that you would wanna send them to for Experian, Equifax and TransUnion. You know, we've moved um, into the modern age, so we don't often mail letters. However, if you um, have a dispute and you need to mail in documentation, you would want to mail it. Otherwise, we do it online now. So um, even the uh, credit reporting agencies are trying to make their life easier. So, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about. Um, is, you know, what is credit, what credit is considered good, what credit is not, um, how your score kind of rates you for the different types of credit um, cards you want, whether it's a loan, a home, or what have you, a score card. 
And so in, in doing that, we, uh, take, we've taken a look and I put out the scores for you. How many people would say in looking at the FICO score that you know around 600 is a good score from 300 to 850? No response? Y'all have to participate. Absolutely not. So 600 is considered very bad or low. I wouldn't say very bad. 500 would be bad. But from what I'm my understanding is 650 or uh, is durable. But you want to have more than, I think they said from the last time when we were trying to purchase a house, 640. Right. If, yeah. if you have 640, that is like the minimum that you will be able to qualify depending on what type of score you have. I'm like, what the, what is composed of? Um, you know, there are those people that, you know, hey, I have a 700. Once you get to that 700 mark, you're like, yes. As you can see, you know, being at a 700, if it was using the Vantage score model, you would be considered good. And if you are within the FICO score model, which I see a lot on our reports, you would be considered very good. So both of them have a five um, spread scale. So there's five different levels. You know, you want to be in what's considered exceptional. You know, that gets you the lowest interest rate if you're buying a home or a car. Um, it gets you that very low, low interest rate when you're buying furniture, if you're not paying cash for it. And um, anywhere from 800 to above, you can see that it's probably a little challenging trying to determine which bank uses which model reports to whom. So I always look at what's the worst scenario and I kind of judge on that um, just to make sure I'm in the right ballpark. Um, something happened. Okay, so while I'm trying to figure this out, okay. Um, you know, it's important that we understand the, our score, understand the credit score as far as what goes into it. What makes up our credit score? Um, when you take a look at this model, you'll see that our payment history makes up 35% of our score. Now, it's very important to understand this because your payment history can be affected by so many things. You know, some of us, it's how often you're paid, if you're being crunched, if you're robbing Peter to pay Paul, uh, medical emergency, losing your job, um, having the virus. You know, the coronavirus has affected a lot of people's credit because, you know, sometimes you had one and two parent homes that lost, both of them lost their, their jobs. And so, they were, you know, credit is not what was on their mind. Their, on their mind was maintaining their home, feeding their family. That's when you go back to just trying to do the basics. And the second highest percentage that goes into creating your credit score is the amount owed. And while a lot of people, you know, say, well, I don't, um, I don't count this or I don't count that. Really, your student loans are are factored into it, but obviously they don't give them the highest rating unless um, you are in default. So when you take a look at your amount owed, you wanna look at your credit cards, you wanna look at your loans, whether it be for car or house. And another interesting part about that is, you know, how many people have a credit card that they may have had for at least 10 years? I can't hear anyone. Yeah, it's still sitting on my I do. Now. All right. How, like 10 years ago. <laughs> okay. How about anybody 15 to 20 years? You have the same, you have Me. at least. Okay. I do. Yeah. I, I'm in that same ballpark. What about 25 years? Oh, is it just me? <laughs> oh, look at that. So, 
One of the things that's so important is we talk about the length of credit history. The longer you have a card, the more reliable you are. You know, they, they feel like you're dependable. So kudos to everybody who still has a card from back in the day. Um, I love that fact because typically you can get your best interest rate on that card, right? No matter what happens, you have that length of history with them. Now, there are other two other important parts, which is your balance of new credit, which can sometimes be good and sometimes be bad, depending on where your credit is. If you're in a, a model trying to lower your credit score, um, let's say what happened, you know, let's say you want to increase that credit score. If you get new credit, you gotta be careful to see what type it is and how it might affect you. Um, but also the last most important thing is credit mix. And I'll tell you a little story. So, you know, I sold my home a couple years ago and I had already paid off my car. I did have credit cards um, that I was in the process of paying down. I sold my home and my credit score dropped by about 80 points. Does anyone see the shock all of this? I was like, are you kidding me? I was finally at 830, what happened? Well, I changed my credit mix. And when I, at the same time I changed my credit mix, I was actually, you know, when you go to buy a home, there are some things you wanna close out, but there you, you keep the majority of it open. And so I, I went ahead and paid everything down. I was ready. I said, I couldn't believe it had dropped that much. I thought it would drop just a little bit. You know, when we see our credit mix ratio, 10% is what I expected. It ended up being um, more than that, which um, was an issue just for me personally, because I now had to think, okay, what can I do to increase that over the next three to six months to get me back to the position I was in? It's just a personal thing. It, with me, I believe in paying cash for most things. Um, who else believes in paying cash? Me. Yeah. Okay. Why do you pay cash for your items? Well, I like to pay cash because I feel like if I if I can't pay for it in cash, I don't need it. You know. Um, yes. With the whole yeah, the whole credit deal. I don't like owing people. That's it. That's what it is. You being all smart and stuff, Grace. Really. <laughs> but but you know but you know but you know what another idea is you pay with your credit card and then when you get the bill pay with your cash, right? See, that's good. So I will actually pay something straight out. We go on vacation. I'm you know I'm out buying shoes or what have you. I pay for cash out of that. I pay for that. However, if I have a really good um, card that's offering me cash back. I will actually go and just put it on the card. Now I have all my cards set to pay off every month. So whatever we charge, they pay down to zero um, automatically. However, like when we took our vacation to the beach, my husband's like, oh, I got it, babe, you know. I was like, oh no, I wanna use this card. And he was all like, well, I thought I was paying for this. I'm like, babe. It doesn't matter. We, we, our money is together, but I want this car because of how much they're offering me back um, based on where I'm staying and how much we spend. He was like, oh, I'm with that because my husband, he, he's a miser. So he definitely likes the fact that, you know, we can get something back. You know, most of us do, right? We want to use that card where we can get something back. And so when, when, when taking a look at that, you know, we we have to consider how much debt do we have? You know, I consider this a debt mountain. You know, are you drowning in your mountain? Is your debt a, mo a mohill? You know, um, how many people think that what they're dealing with right now is a debt mountain that sometimes it's hard to, to even conquer that mountain? No, it, it, it was. It wasn't in the past when I when I had that mountain. Oh yes. Anybody else? Yep. 
Yeah, I, I definitely felt that way. Um, you know, sometimes we get debt and it's not actually ours. We may have co-signed for a debt. Um, like in my case, when I had gotten divorced, I had ha added all my, my husband was added to all my cards. You know, we were married. Um, and when we got divorced, I was left with 40,000 of his debt. Yes, 40,000 of his debt. Um, which, you know, of course, really made me mad because I took such pains to make sure I did everything right. And I had no choice but to pay it down because it was all the cards were in my name. He was just a writer on my card, an authorized signer, right? Am I the only person who's been in that situation? Yeah, probably. You're not the I only know. one. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Woo. Sometimes it's, it's hard being on that mountain by myself. I appreciate that. Um, you know, and, and he left me with debt. But I also had my mother on my card um, so that I could kind of help my mom. I didn't want her to have to pay for a lot of stuff. And my mom, she would call me and be like, honey, um, there's a Thomas Kincaid painting I want. Can I, do you mind if I get that? I'm like, mom, how much is it? I'm thinking five, 600. Oh, well, um, this one is like $1,400. Like $1,400? Mom. She's like, well, you know, once I leave, y'all will get it. I'm like, oh, Jesus, mom, can't you find something cheaper? You know, and so my mom, she, she did like quality things. And because she had my card, she would actually be respectful and say, hey, can I get it? Opposed to charging something really expensive. You know, the, the other thing that, that um, kind of creates a debt mountain, how many people, you know, with your significant other, do you have an agreement? Like, I, if I won't spend this much without talking to you, or this amount is our allowance. How many people fall in that category? I had to uh, enforce that rule because my husband was going ridiculous. I look up and he have a credit card. Oh, okay. So this is what we're going to start doing. <laughs> yes, yes. I had to do that in my own marriage. My husband, I, he um, worked at Dillard's as a manager. Lord have mercy. This man would come home with the most expensive things. I was like, babe, we got to have an agreement. How much can we each spend without permission? And I said, I set yours like at $40. And he was like, 40? I need more than that. How many people think 40 might be reasonable a week? Oh, that's good. I like that. Because right? I said, I should take on what you said. <laughs> I know, because I was thinking, you know, if it's anything more than that, most likely it's for us, it's for the family. You know, and if he's going to buy clothes, well, we already know he's going to buy clothes. You don't need permission for that. These are these items that, you know, he's getting off work and he decides that he wants to go at, by X and we haven't put it in my budget, you know, because I'm a person who budgets. So it's important that we identify what has created our debt mountain so that we can learn from it. Now with the debt-free roadmap, you know, there are five ways to raise your credit score by 150 points um, within three to six months. So who needs that? 150 points, that could definitely help us out, right? Absolutely. And so, I've laid out a, a plan for you to be able to accomplish this. So in order to grow, to raise your credit score by 150 points, the first thing you have to do is look at your credit report. You know, and, and this is where I really want to talk about, you know, it's important that you look at it at least twice a year. Um, when you, if that changes, when you have item, things that change your credit score, it's going to really show within three to six months, you'll about be able to see the total effect of that change. Um, so checking it twice a year, at the very least, you're looking to make sure no one has, you know, created fraudulent accounts, right? And so here's the address, www.annualcreditreport.com, where you can actually go and get your free credit reports. Um, 
you, there are certain situations as well. You, you're, you're able to get a free one every year, everyone, right? Well, with, if within 60 days of being denied credit, employment, or insurance, you're also able to go get another credit report. Um, now, you also get a free credit report if you're receiving social service assistance. That's something a lot of people don't know. Um, if you're um, unemployed and you'll be seeking a job within the next 60 days, especially the finance industry, they look at your credit when they determine whether they're gonna hire you, whether or not you're gonna be a good employee. So sometimes they think, how can you help us handle ours if you can't handle yours? Um, and I actually know a friend who was in finance and um, had a, like a, a car repossession that she voluntarily turned back in. She was late on her house payment. Obviously she needed a job paying more money, right? Well, she got denied the job because they said she had bad credit. Now for me, this, you know, it's counterintuitive, especially if someone has a good working history, they don't have any crime, you know, there, there are other things to consider besides the credit report to determine if there'll be a great employee. And um, so the very time she needed that new job, she was denied it simply because of her credit. Now, you also, like I said, wanna keep check of your credit in cases of fraud um, and you're able to you know, get a free credit report and you would wanna get one from all three places. You would want to put a lock on your account has anyone ever put a lock on their account? So this is when you would actually report to the credit um, bureaus that you want to lock your account to make sure that no one can open credit in your name. And then if you wanna open credit in your name, you simply notify them or they'll call you and say, hey, we got an alert. Someone is trying to get credit at such and such. Is this you? Obviously. So, mm -hmm. sorry. so Sadia, I had to do that for my um, my middle son. He was, uh, someone had used his credit and I have no idea how they even got it. So it was mm. about, so I had to lock it. And how old is he? Well, right now he's 13, but at the time I think he was like 11 or 12. Oh, wow. So, or the year before last. Mm -hmm. Have you considered changing his social security number? No, but I believe you, you mentioned that to me before. <laughs> I sure did. Um, we have to do the same thing for my granddaughter and she's only six, um, but we're, we're definitely changing it because someone um, is filing her on their taxes. And so um, we're going to change her score. It's and um, I actually have a, a set of clients who they change their social security number. And you would think it would be quite a big hassle, um, but it's actually best, you know, in your best interest to change it if you feel like you've been a victim of fraud because your number is gonna stay out there and you would want to make sure you're protected. You wouldn't want someone claiming your benefits. Um, you would want to make sure you're protected so in looking at the debt-free roadmap, there are five ways to raise your credit score. And the second is find and fix any errors you might have, right? This, this is something that, you know, I know at ATS we've talked about, we mentioned it last week, that you would want to go and file dispute letters directly with either the credit reporting agency. Um, if you don't get any resolution there, you go directly to the company and demand they correct it. And when you do that, you wanna make sure one, is your basic information on your credit report right? Sometimes they may have that you lived at an address you didn't live at. They may have that you had an alias name that you did not have. And we create aliases when we, you know, get married or divorced, or we might've filled out an application with your middle name and then another one without your middle name. And so it's real important to make sure not only is your name correct, but all of the accounts belong to you. 
you know, um, my mom had a name that was similar to someone else. And the only, the only difference was their social security numbers. But my mom would get calls for the lady because a creditor had linked my mom up with the lady. And um, so it's important that you make sure anything reported on your credit is yours. And if there are any delinquency error, errors, you would want to make sure, you know, you can show them your check, your cancel checks in the old days or your um, bank statement to prove, hey, I paid my bills on time. This doesn't belong to me. Can you remove it? You also want to make sure that any other old disputed items have been removed and they stay off of your credit. And if you've had garnishments, judgments, they do roll off after a period of time, thank God. So you would want to make sure they also are removed. Um, you know, it's interesting when we talk about, you know, our balances, because as we've said, they really impact our FICO score, you know, depending on what's going on in your life at that time. And if you have the burden of carrying someone else's debt because it's not properly corrected, but you may only check your credit every two or three years when something happens, you know, because life is too busy, we're, we're actually setting ourselves up for something bad to happen. And one of the things you want to, you want to make sure is that when you are um, disputing your, uh, something that's on your report, you want to make sure you send in all of your supporting documentation. You want to keep, you know, have your credit report, your bank statements. Um, has anyone, disputed anything that's been on their credit report before? Yeah, I've disputed about three different things because it has a little link when you're on there that'll say dispute. So I've done it a couple of times actually. And was there any results? Yep, they took a lot of stuff off. And with my husband, one time there was um, a, um, uh, what do you call that? Uh, child support on there and that was disputed and they took that off too. Oh, that's really good. That's really good, you know, because child support is something that can follow you. Has anyone else had an experience? Well, there was a few years ago when I was using a company to uh, help me erase and take off some of the items. Well, there is still an item on my report from like 2006, it was a car. It was a what? car that I took back mm -hmm. because the job that I had, I was working at the, I, I live in uh, Galveston, Texas, and we had a casino ship. Well, the casino ship bellied up, went out and never came back. So therefore I could no longer afford that particular car. So right. I took it back. So it showed up as a, a, a repossession. Mm -hmm. Well, it's mm -hmm. still on there. So I'm going to. It's I'm still on there? And see if you can help me. Because I only have like three things that's on my report. But I have some late and I have some charge offs and something from when I was married and that sort of stuff. But other than that, that's the, the largest amount that I have. And wow. if, that, if that wasn't on my report, I wouldn't even owe probably $3,000. That's how close That's I am. I'm almost really there. Good. So I will, um, I will get with you and uh, see mm -hmm. what you can walk me through or how you can help me. Yeah. So when you use this, the, the agency you used, was this one of the ones that... Um, helped you pay your bills, they set up an agreement and you paid them and they paid other people? Or was it someone who simply wrote the letters and sent them in for you for a fee? For a fee, $99 a month. And I did that. I had like 38 items and I'm down now like to three, four, four maybe. Mm -hmm. So they helped me with a lot, but they did not, even with the letters, and all of that, they still did not help me with that particular car. Okay, okay. So yes, um, I've actually seen online where we, we now have um, subscription-based credit assistance where you don't actually pay them a one-time fee. You go in and you pay them a certain amount every month. And whenever you need help, 
they'll help you with that. Um, they'll actually help you get your credit report to look at and analyze. So that can actually be very helpful, um, especially when you know you're going for something in the future, right? Because if you want to go to the bank and say, hey, I want to get this property. I have this amount of money. You don't want your, your credit to be a hindrance, right? And we're talking the lack of credit or bad credit. So you want to make sure you're right. You, you're in that sweet spot. Um, has anyone ever used one of the companies that did pay your bills for you? They made that arrangement. Um, I had a company, they didn't exactly pay my bills, but I, it was something similar to what Mr. Sugar said, where I was paying them every month and they would send out disputes and stuff for my, um, the things that was on my credit. But I was paying way too much for one and they didn't really do what I wanted them to do. So I, I, I canceled them and said, that's okay, I'll do it myself. And as far as access to my credit report, some banks automatically will give you access to that anyway. Like I have Capital One, they do that. Chase does that. Oh, you're um, still in my thumb. You're gone now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go on now, girl. Tell it, tell it. So, I mean, you, you can get avenues all type of different ways without spending a whole lot of money like that because I, I cleaned up my credit all by myself and I didn't even need um them and then I saved on money too so I'm sorry go ahead sir. <laughs> oh yeah so depending on how savvy you are you can do that if you have the time you can do that um and it really too depends on if that company is still in business it can get quite complicated sometimes when they're selling your debt and that person like I had a client once who I don't know if y'all remember there was a huge furniture store called Healy and Myers um and there was Sears they sold their debt. And so it kept being sold to other people. And at that point, you have to rely on your documents to prove your case, right? And so, um, like we said, we wanna make sure you hold on to your originals, you send the copies in, you make sure you send those letters certified mail with a signature return receipt, right? Because they may say, oh, I never received it. But you know you received it. The bank. The post office has tracking information saying it went there. Um, if you don't get a follow-up response within 30 days, you want to reach out and contact them. If for some reason you need to send in supporting documents, their clock is 45 days. So just kind of keep that in mind. It's not a quick fix. It's something that does take time. And a lot of times, if they feel like it's a frivolous request, they get like 20, 30 requests from the same person for for stuff they may ignore then all of your all of your requests because you've just given them so much to research at one time um so like we said there there are other ways um you know five ways to raise your credit score by 150 points the third one is simple don't miss any more payments right easier said than done though right Sometimes you do rob Peter to pay Paul. Sometimes you have an unexpected bill come up or society issue come up and you're not paying your bills, you're out of work, you're unemployed or underemployed because that's a big problem in a middle class. A lot of people are underemployed. You just take whatever job you can get thinking you'll find a job in your own field or what, at your level. And the reason why this is so important, as we said, this is 35% of your score. So, not, you know, I, I can imagine that quite a lot of people had a hit, um, especially if they were late paying their mortgage or their vehicle during the past year. You could have worked out an arrangement with your um, um, car loan people. They would have put back two payments to the back end for you automatically. So if you or someone you know did not take advantage of that, they can still call and say, okay, I owe eight months. I would like two of them put to the back or can I refinance? What can I do? Can I, can, what can I do to help erase this deficit that I have? Um, and so when you're late, depending on what it is, your, your credit score can drop by 80 points, just like that. And that's, and that's a big deal. 
being is 35% of your score. The other way is you want to pay down your debt, right? That's everyone's goal, especially here at ATS. You know, we want to be um, financially free. We want to be debt free so that we can actually help other people. We can focus on our business. Um, and sometimes that means you have to call and negotiate a payment plan. Now, it's, it's interesting because the way it used to be is you could call and depending on what the debt was, negotiate a payment plan. Um, you would make payments over a period of time. Now they want that all that money at one time or they're not going to negotiate with you. Has anyone experienced that? Well, that, that's I have, and they tried to do that to me, but I told them, well, you know what? How long do I have? They told me what all I had before they um, was sending me to collections. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. And then I went right into my bank account and did uh, pay uh, bill pay mm -hmm. and sent a certain amount up to maybe two months or whatever time I had. And, and did it that way, like forget you guys. And then I kept calling every so often and say, hey, can I do a, um, a pay now? And uh, I forgot what you call it, but sometimes they'll, they'll say that you don't have to pay the whole thing. You can get mm -hmm. a, a discount on it. And I say, oh, yeah. okay, it's already paid. Take from there and then refund me back the rest of it. <laughs> I know that's right. That is so true um, because it's, it's very important. Um, as long as you're paying something, Typically, they don't send you to debt collections. As If you're paying something, you're in a good position. It's when they haven't heard from you um, that they want to send you to collections. Um, and like, for instance, my mom passed away. They're sending collection notices. So I have to call them and then send her death certificate to say, hey, you know, stop sending me these. Um, because they will continue to hound you for your hospital bills and your different bills. So when you're paying it down, you know, we want to think about our credit utilization. Right around 30%, we've all heard that, right? 30% is a good, good amount. And that is true whether you're buying a house or you are trying to raise your credit. So by looking at your debt to credit ratio, you would want to go in, get your credit report, right? Look at all three because not every company report to all three. Some of them report to only one. And you would want to pull out all the ones that were unique credit reports and add up what your total credit owed is. You have that total. Then you want to go through and add up what all of your total available credit is and take your total credit divided by total available credit. So I might have 3,000 in credit, but my total available credit might be 30,000. So, you know, I'm doing great as far as they're concerned. Um, but sometimes you, you know, your available credit might be 5,000 because, you know, they now have started linking where if you're late on one credit card, guess what? It affects all of them. They'll lower your available credit and raise your interest. So sometimes what you'll find, and I saw this when I was paying off my ex-husband's debt, was that I would make payments. And every time I made a payment, they'd lower the available credit. I was like, you have got to be kidding me. Because yeah. by them doing that, they did not need the ability to raise my credit score. Is everybody following that? Yeah. And so, you know, the, uh, now we're at a point where I want to talk about what's important. So debt roll down strategy, snowball, debt snowball, you know, if you want to pay off your debt, is it, what's one of the things that you think? Is it better to pay off your bill with the highest balance? or your bill with the highest interest rate. I, I need y'all to talk to me. I did the snowball back about, God, 20, 30 plus years ago. And the best thing is you pay the, I paid a small one because it was the first one that I can get to a zero balance. Then I took that money and, you know, didn't say, oh, look, I got an extra $30 a month. I took that, added to another bill and that's how I got mine down. 
And that next what bill, was it a higher balance or a higher interest bill? It was a probably a high interest because the balance wasn't too big. It was probably the interest. Yes. Has anyone else tried it before? What I've started doing, this is Adelina. Um, what I've started doing is paying um, all of them a little extra um, than usual. So if my bill is about $30, I'll send them $50. And then if I have extra the next two weeks, I'll just send them an extra 15 more dollars to kind of, you know, eat up that interest and put toward the um, complete balance. And you do that across multiple cards? All, uh, actually, everything, all my bills, I try to do that. <laughs> Opposed to just credit cards because I have a few of them, but I, I feel like the, the faster I can get it done, if I have the extra money, why not? Okay. Has anyone else tried another method? Well, I took the David Ramsey class almost been about maybe three years ago and starting with my least expensive I, I went ahead what I owed the least on and then that money that I paid for that one because I don't have it any longer then I paid that on the next and all the way up all the way up so now I'm still caught at that car and then one student uh a student loan thing but and uh, yeah and it it definitely made a difference because I had already been paying. So that same little $30, $25, $55, whatever, I didn't miss it. Didn't and miss it, it. It, it did make it go by a lot faster. So that is, it's a good thing to do. And so was your method to pay down, and I think you told me, but to pay down the highest interest or the highest balance? <laughs> no, I paid, uh, I was paying down on the highest balance. Okay. Did anyone else try a different method? No? Okay, so I would give some, you know, I would let you know what I would do in that situation because there are several methods that are good. Some people listen to Dave Ramsey, um, Susie Orman, they all have these different methods, right? Well, from a financial point of view, what you would want to do as a person, I always give my clients the quick win. You know, let's get a quick win. Makes you feel good that you got something down to zero, right? So you may have one or two that can be re really quick wins. We'll pay those down. Take the money you're paying those. Then this is where analysis comes in. So then I look at their highest interest rate and highest balance. And for each one, compare balance and interest rate to see which one is the highest overall. And it could be that you have one that has a, a, a lower balance, but the interest rate is, too, is really high in comparison. And so I kind of look at all of them and I strategize. And if we have one that's gonna just really suck up the time and give you the feeling like you're not moving, then I may change after a couple months and give you another quick win. But then I'll go back to the plan. Okay, and I do it from a numerical point of view, always saving you the most interest as possible. And every time taking that money that you, like you said, you don't miss it, you've already been paying it and applying it to the next one. Now, the, the scary part in that is when um, I start with my clients and the first thing I have them do is sit down with me and I tell them, bring all their bills. Now, I had a client that walked in and her bills were like, Ugh, I couldn't even stretch my, my fingers around her bills. And I sat there with her, showed her how to record them all, made sure she recorded her balance, her due dates, her interest rates. And she was so surprised because you, you don't ever want to see the total, grand total, right? You're like, no, let me just keep paying it. I have it kind of in my head. I know what I'm doing. It's a reality check when you get to see it because in her mind, she thought she only owed about $10,000. 
And her husband, who's in finance, kept telling her, no, 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 you owe a lot more than that, just based on how often she shopped. And she bought for their fur babies all the time. And it turned out that she owed a little more than 20K. So, you know, what we think is real isn't always real. We have to actually put it in on a spreadsheet. We, you can either write it down or you can um, spreadsheet it. I am very much a spreadsheet because I can change it at any time, but you do what you're comfortable with. And uh, my mom had a very complicated um, paper and um, pencil system. Okay, she was that it was old school. She got it from her, you know, her her stepdad was an economist, and so she had that process. Whatever works for you, but either way, you need to see your total so that you can keep it top of mind and remember your goal. And no matter what, you want to get to the point that you always pay your bills within thirty days. Now, by paying your bills within thirty days, what are some of the advantages? What are some of the advantages by paying your bills within 30 days when they're credit related? No interest and having uh, a record of on time paying. But I think mostly that you, you, you miss out on having to pay that interest rate. That's right. You know, I, I've said for probably 30 years, I believe in OPM, other people's money. Okay which means that if you're letting me float for 30 days on your money, well, I'm gonna take the 30 days and allow mine to accrue interest I, instead of paying you. And so what I do is I just pay it before, right, you know, every month, boom, pay it. I don't pay any interest whatsoever. And it's just other people's money. It's just a smart move. Um, you, you, you do have to stay on top of it. Um, I know that, Sometimes when I was going through forgetful situations before bill pay was really as good as it is now, I would forget. I would have that money sitting in my bank account. I would forget to pay the bill. Man, that next month, I'd be like, are you serious? I forgot to pay the bill? Ugh. And that would frustrate me because it's not like I didn't have the money. I had the money set aside to pay it. I just had a lot going on with the kids, with my job, all of these things, and you forget to pay. So I'm a big um, proponent of once you set your budget to put some things on automatic pay within your budget so you have made sure you are not going to use that money. And I do these based on when you're being paid. You know, if you get two paychecks every um, month, um, versus every two weeks. This is definitely a, a, a good system because you know exactly how much you're getting every two weeks. Um, borrowing something that may happen that may change your dynamic of your budget. But we can now go into our bank accounts at, just by going through our phone and stopping an automatic payment. Easy as that. Um, and so by setting up the automatic payment, you, you make it easier for yourself because you don't have to make a decision on whether or not you're paying it. You already know that money is not even coming to me. It's not even mine. You know, I know people um, and even pastors who pay their tithe automatically because they don't want to, in their, you know, in their mind, steal from God. They don't want to take what they believe isn't theirs. And so if it comes in their account, they may not, you know, be paying attention. They just want to go ahead and pay it off the top, right? And so they go ahead and do that and pay it off the top. Now, I'm one of those that I want to be, you know, actively participating in when I, you know, give my tithe and offerings. And so my church, you know, we have an app and we pu I pull up the app. I look at it. I process a payment. You know, they have, you know, apps. We can go on a website. You can be in person. I was in church for the first time in hmm, maybe seven, eight months. This past Sunday, my husband and I finally got to go to church. We're both vaccinated. And um, my church had not had any um, breakouts. 
that you had to reserve your spot for, for which um, service you wanted to go to, to for social distancing. So we were like, okay, let's finally go. And it was so good to be in church and to process my payment. Um, I had been doing it from home, you know, on watching it on YouTube and paying it from home. But it was just so nice to know that it was going to go to the furtherance of the gospel that, um, you know, the church had needs that we could take care of. So just kind of keeping those things in mind when you're looking at your debt. Now, the fourth, the fifth way is you want to diversify your credit. Now, what do I mean by that? You know, I have up here, it's a mix of credit. You know, it's worth 10%. You want to go through your credit cards and installment loans. I've given you the story of what happened to me when I paid my um, house off and how it negatively impacted my score. Has anyone else had an experience that was similar to that? No, it's okay. You know, um, sometimes it just happens that way. You know, when you say a mix of credit, there are some people who may have a student loan and they may have paid cash for their car, they're renting, but they have like five store credit cards. Well, they don't have the right mix. And so that's what we're talking about. Your store cards, your MasterCard, Visa, those cards compared to your loans, whether it be home loan, car loan, what have you. Um, and so you want to look at that. Now, I put some do's and don'ts up here. You know, some people, you know, they're trying to creatively figure out how to boost their score. And they know they don't have the right mix. They're like, you know, I need a loan. So they'll go put up collateral and get a loan just to improve their score. Don't do that. Don't, don't do that. Don't borrow money and pay interest when you don't have to. You know, take your time with that. Don't, you know, it's not a good idea for you to do that. And, and you know, you want to do what you think is going to give you the biggest bang. And we're going to talk about that. The other thing you want to do is as you're paying off your debt, don't close your credit card once they get to a zero balance. How many people have made that mistake? Oh, I have. No one told me that you were supposed to keep it and just spend like a little bit, like $25 for gas and then pay it off and do it again to continuously build up your credit. So they either closed me out and I didn't know, or um, it's for different stuff like jewelry and stuff. Now I'm learning. And they yes. Anyone else? Yeah, I did that. Um, I didn't know, like, like Alina. I didn't know that you were supposed to not pay the whole thing off, but leave some on there until I start learning from Antonio. That was it. So yeah, I, as soon as I got, as soon as I paid off the card, cut it up. Let's go. No, cancel the account. <laughs> so I didn't wow. know. Yeah. And so um, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and pay it down because they'll charge you interest. Let me explain to you how uh, you would think that the credit cards would say, well, her most recent, if she pays me, I'm going to apply it to the oldest bill. First in, first out, last in, last out, right? No, no, no. They have another trick up their sleeve. When you pay them, they apply it to the most recent bill and you're, you're accruing interest on all that old stuff, okay? And so you, you always end up paying, you know, the way compound interest works, it compounds, you know, based daily, based on your average daily rate. So it's not a good thing. Um, and so once you get to the point that you pay a card off, go ahead, pay it off, put that card to the side, especially if you have other debt. You don't need to keep charging monthly on that card if you have other debt. What you do want to do though, is every couple months, just do a charge on it every couple months. Because what happens is, as they said, they'll close your card up if they see inactivity. 
And I'm guilty of that. I cannot tell you how often Lane Bryant has closed my card. And then I go shopping. I'm like, oh, you closed my card again? Can, can you open it back up? Because I'm thinking, why would you close my card? I, you know, I don't go shopping every season for new clothes. And so it's a little inconvenient when they do that, you know, and it's a game in that because if they close your card, they lower your available credit. So they're very savvy. These aren't things by accident. You know, they want to make your credit look as bad as possible because then they can charge you more in interest. So I tell all of my newbies, all of the people who, you know, may have bad credit, but they want to get started on fixing their credit. Go ahead and start with a secure credit card. You know, you may pay two or three hundred dollars. You pay it up front, they get you a card, and then you spend down your two or three hundred dollars. And then so you you are literally turning over your money. And actually, it's a good training mechanism for children as well. Um, especially when you're getting to high school, college age children, you know, young adults, um, they just think they can swipe these debit cards. Okay. My twins would swipe. I'm like, you have bounced your, for your, for your meal at school. You cost more money by not paying attention to your account than, you know, your food costs. It's ridiculous. And so they actually literally, they don't think money grows on trees. They just think that there's a abundance of it on their card. <laughs> and so what you want to do then is, you know, I tied my kid's account to mine so that it would never bounce. But every time it pulled from my account, I charged my children. Okay, now you owe me. You owe me this. You owe me that. And I could put a stop on their card. And, you know, they're real serious about that lunch. They're real serious. So they would fix whatever issue they had. The other thing is, as we talked about, pay down your existing cards and pay off your cars um, or student loan debt if you have the extra money. Those are other things. If you say, well, you know, I just had $3,000 in a student loan. Go ahead and pay off your card. Keep it open and Maybe just use it for gas and pay it off for gas every month. Maybe use it just for groceries. And then start paying on your student loan. Once you pay down your credit card debt, you might just have a car loan left. I'll say, wow, whew, I'm good because now I'm up to date on my car loan. I just have 34 more you know, payments. Go ahead and pay it off. Otherwise, you can say, well, I want to build, keep my credit building. Let me keep this going. And then I'll keep churning one credit card over and over. I'll use this for just when I eat out. By doing this, you're actually already in a good position. The only way to build your credit, um, to have better credit if you're not late, is to have longer credit and to add diverse credit you may get to the point where you want to buy furniture, you want to buy a home, you want to buy a new car, right? Um, so I believe in driving my car. I have this um, hybrid um, from 2014. Oh, she's not going anywhere. And probably when she does, I, it will only be to get me a hybrid SUV. You know, I don't believe just because I paid a car off to get a new one. I don't care about the Joneses. I don't care about them at all. It's about me, right? It's about your individual household. So how many people buy their car and just because, you know, it's kind of got old, a little raggedy by then, you just get a new car. How many people have done that? Come on now. I, you know what? I have, and it wasn't because it got raggedy. It was just because different stuff started happening on and I'm like oh no 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 I'm not gonna keep on paying for this car to get fixed I'm just gonna go ahead and give me another one and so I didn't I'm learning I'm telling you I'm learning because now since I bought this truck for my husband the next vehicle I get 
is going to be leased. I am done. I'm not paying for not another thing because Lisa, you can get it. You can get a brand new one. This is the following next year. Anything goes wrong on them, you just take it on in. Hey, this is wrong. This is wrong. The only thing you have to pay for is probably the tires and the oil change. And I mm. like that. So who else has tried leasing? No one? Everybody else owns their car? Or you're paying on your car? Okay. So yes, leasing is definitely an opportunity. Um, you know, it is for I used the... To. Go ahead. Yeah, I used to lease like this. <laughs> the lease is figured on the depreciation. Mm -hmm. Well, the most depreciation of the car is when you drive it off the lot. Yep. That's when it'll depreciate the most. So I had a friend of mine in the car business. I would tell him what kind of car I'd want. He'd find it between five and 10,000 miles on it. I would lease it from him. Then when it got to 45,000, I would turn it back in and find another one because the least appreciated miles of any vehicle is from 5,000 to 45,000. Those are the miles that depreciate the least. So I was able to get the best car at the lowest price. Smart. That's really good. Now, you had a friend who either set your contract based on your mileage. You didn't have one based on time. I um, mean, you didn't have, obviously, a balloon at the end of your lease time. So very smart indeed. Does anybody think that that may be an option for them in the future? <laughs> okay, so I'm risk adverse. So my issue is that I do not want to, you know, definitely leasing works when you're, you have a business, you can write it off. I mean, we all should be doing that, whether you own it, um, you're paying on it or not, as long as it's not depreciated, you can continue that. Um, but once it's fully depreciated, yeah, you, you, you need to start looking for another vehicle to make sure you're not paying you know, more taxes than you ought to. Um, but for me, I see leasing as a risk for me because see, I love having a vehicle I don't have to pay for. I love that I don't have to pay that money. So I put all that money into my savings account and that's how I build up my savings account in addition to other ways. So um, that's something to think about. So, um, you know, when we're on this debt-free road, you know, roadmap, when we're on our journey, we want to follow the signs, right? A lot of times we make really bad decisions. You know, we don't listen to people who are giving us good advice. We think that it works for us. Well, you know, the, as they say the, that the, you know, lunacy is doing the same thing and expecting a different response. You know, you do it over and over and you expect something different. It's not going to change. You keep overspending, you're going to have the same poor credit. It's not going to work for you. So you want to pay your, your bills in full all the time when you are able to. Caveat there. You're working at a different level. You see you work until this goal right? So this is your goal if you're not there yet. Um, pay off your debt and don't close the account as we talked to before. You know, there are some other stop signs, things that happen that you know, whoa, I can't do that. Can anyone think of another stop sign? I can tell you one. So my twins wanted to be like their friends and get brand new beamers, okay? You know, their friends had Mercedes, BMWs, um, really nice cars. I told them, let me explain something to you. You have me for a mother. I am not about keeping up with the Joneses. I am not, you know, um, going to be poor because I bought two new vehicles for kids who don't even deserve them. I mean, what do you have to work for if I give you everything? I need to leave some surprises out there in the world for you. So that would have been an immediate stop sign. Sadia, don't do that, you know? But then there are some things that are simply yield signs. You know what? 
uh, let me listen to some wisdom. You know, yield sign is, you know what? I've been doing really good on my credit. Let me see if I can request a credit increase to boost my score. It's not that you need ex more credit, but by getting it, you create a lower debt to credit ratio, right? That's the goal. So some of you may now say, okay, that's something I haven't done. I haven't recently requested a credit limit increase. Now, um, you know, the banks, if you don't do it and everything is going good, you know, you'll get a letter in the mail where they've increased your, uh, your credit limit. And you're like, thank you very much. I appreciate the effort. No problem, because I automatically know, excellent, my, you know, it's, it's putting me in a better position with my credit limit. So talk to me about, you know, everybody's probably still receiving these pre-approved credit, credit um, letters in the mail, right? They've sent you a credit offer. How many of these junk mails do you think you get in a, a month? And it's always towards the end of the month when they start coming. I said, what is it? It is. <laughs> and you're, when it's coming up on a holiday. And right now they're thinking summer. You know, they do summer, Christmas. Um, and what do you do with them when you get them? I throw them in the trash. Shred them, shred them, shred them. Yes. Um, it's, it's interesting because the question is, are you really approved? No. What, what happened? Well, when it says that you're, you are, you have been pre-approved, that's what's in the big bold letters in the smaller letters based upon acceptance or something to that that's line. Right. Yeah. So it's yeah. not been approved and then they send you this little temporary fake card type thing i used to fall for all of that but no uh -uh. i i found that that's not really what it, it says and a lot of that stuff that comes in the mail even cons appliance store you've been approved for five thousand dollars based yes. upon you know but i do have a question i i've got it we're starting to film so i've got to get, get ready to do my part but i do have a question I have been contemplating getting myself one of the secured cards because I have I'm 67 years old with zero credit cards. Wow. Okay. I don't have any credit cards at all. The only real debt I have is like the car payment, but um the of the car that I'm driving now. And then on the credit is the one from way back in 2006. So you're saying that that would be something you would tell a newbie to go on and pay that little $200 and learn, and I'll be reestablishing? Yes. Okay, let me ask you this. Is there a way that I can not, I mean, I can ask them not to increase the limit or, because you know, you're paying on time for six months or eight months, they want to increase it $50 or $100. Is that a good thing to go ahead and allow them to increase it? Or should I let them know I don't want, I want to just stay right here at this $200? If you think that you're disciplined enough to pay it off every month, I would allow them to, to raise it because that improves your credit. Okay. Now, if you feel like um, if they keep raising it, you know, I might get to the point where I can't pay off that balance every month. Then you want to take a different measure when you get to there. Because the idea is not to hurt you, it's to help you. And so once it stops helping you, then you're like, okay, maybe I should, you know, talk to them about lowering the balance and, and, and not explaining my situation, but simply saying, no, I want this to stay at this amount for the purpose I'm using it for. But if you can um, handle it, let them increase it over time. And what happens with the secured cards, they'll increase it, but eventually they'll just send you a regular card. And they've, they'll say, you've proven yourself. So either way, whether they raise the limit or and eventually send you a card, you're actually improving your credit score.
That was really good. Okay, thank you. All You're right, so I have. Welcome. Okay, see everybody in the morning. All right, enjoy your filming. Okay, so, you know, there is only one way to get to debt free living, and that's you must be disciplined. If you're not disciplined before you know it, you're going to creep back to your old habits. You know, it's, it's, it's like when we make a, you know, New Year's resolution, right? I'm going to go to the gym faithfully. I'm going to run a mile every day. I'm going to stop eating chocolate forever. Um, you don't keep those, you know, they say the gym stays packed at most two and a half months. You know, typically by March, you get your gym back for all the real gym, gym people, you know, um, because people don't hold on to their beliefs. They, over time, stuff start getting in the way. They stop coming. Same thing happens with your credit. If you're not disciplined, if you have a plan to get out of debt, stick to your guns. Hold yourself accountable or have an accountability partner and say, okay. I have to do better. I need you to help me do better because I know I have a weakness. And if you see me start to slip, you know, let me know. And so with my clients, I check in on them every month. And so my piece of accountability for them is to have them send me their spreadsheet. And they'll be like, oh, um, okay, uh, I can get that to you by Saturday because they haven't been keeping up with their spreadsheet. And so I do that every month to, to have them fill it out, right? I want them to be accountable because this is how they're going to reach their goal. And I'm there to help them reach their goal. So, um, you know, when we come to life, there's always accidents and speed limits. You know, there's always things that happen. You know, um, we talked about the fact that we were giving, you know, we we're giving people um, at, at ATS, you know, when someone has a need, we're there for them. We're very generous with each other. We want our money to pass a certain number of times. Um, so we may have given away money. We may have, you know, not hit the pump, the brakes, you know, when we were supposed to, you know, we may be slipping and sliding all over our budget. One month, you just be like, you know what? I'm just going to uh, throw the blood on it and pick it up the next month. I have totally blown my budget. Well, you can always pick your budget back up. It's, you don't throw it away. You don't say, oh, I'm done. I've totally screwed it up. Nope, pick it up fresh the next month, okay? Pick it up fresh that next paycheck. It's not too bad. And you might be saying, well, I kind of skipped two months. Pick it up fresh from where you are. You can always restart your budget. You can always plug right back in and keep it moving. It's, you know, it's that feeling of being defeated that keeps us from picking it back up. Plus the fact that it's not very exciting to do. And, you know, you just want it over. You can think of like 20 things you'd rather be doing than writing, you know, typing in your budget. Now, only you can determine how fast you go through this process, right? You can act like you're in a neighborhood, you know, 25 miles an hour, slow gets it done. You can zoom on through it, missing opportunities for improvement, but you would have made it through all five steps and you're waiting to see the impact on your credit report. I would then advise you at six months to go right back through the same process because you would want to go back and see what you missed, what opportunity may be there that wasn't there before, so you can continuously improve your credit and, and you know, continuously improve your debt to credit ratio. It's very important, especially if you're gonna be owning property and you're gonna have assets. And if you want to leverage your money to become a millionaire, you are going to need to improve your credit to be able to leverage that. If you want to get buildings and you want to you know, have businesses you have to be credit worthy for that. So this is all trying to help us become credit worthy. You know, and sometimes there are things that happen and we're like, whoa, I hate it when I'm taking an exit and it's closed and it's dark at night. You know, what am I supposed to do? Detour ahead and 
I can see the other part of the road, yet you're going to make me go all the way around. You know, so I've had to take a detour. We do that to ourselves, you know, with our credit. You know what? We have to learn to change directions based on our goals so that we can meet our goals. You know, the, the pandemic caused a lot of people to have to pivot. We all had to change direction for one reason or another. You know, we, especially all of us entrepreneurs, you know, buddy entrepreneurs, ex, you know, seasoned entrepreneurs, we in some shape or form were all affected and we had to be flexible. And those people that weren't flexible perished. Their businesses went away. And then the, there was some, they were in their industries, but there was nothing they could do. They shut down the restaurants. They shut down the bars. They shut down department stores, right? There was nothing you could do about you losing your job or keeping your business in the mall when the mall was shut. Um, the other thing is you want to learn to control your spending. And you can only control a thing if you track a thing, okay? You can't control something just whenever you want to. That's not called control. Okay, you want to track your budget, track your money, control it. You want to know where every dollar of your money is going so that you can meet your goal. We all have a plan in the future, right? So I want to talk to you a little bit about your plans. What are your plans for your money? Yes, I don't have any volunteers. What's your plan for your money? Do you have a get out of debt plan? Do you have a, um, a roadmap to success for your debt? I can't believe it, no one? Okay, so if you don't have debt and everybody's here is debt free, what about your plan for the future? Do you have a plan for your money in the future? Yes. Is there a certain amount you want to make? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, my plan is to follow what Antonio says. Can you? Uh -huh. But the background is really loud. Uh -oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Maya, cut that down. Uh -uh. Can you hear me now? Oh, I was saying that. Um, I said my plan. My plan is to um follow the instructions of what Antonio said. Um, to um get out of that. Well, I'm not. I don't really have much debt at all. But you know, to keep out of debt. I'm saying. Right. Which plan are you going to follow? He's given us so many nuggets. Which one? I think she's having. Uh, well, I know, I know the cash flow one. I'm definitely, you know, the trans income thing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um. I know you're and, working uh, on some plans, right? Yeah. You have some exciting things. Coming. Yeah, that one. I think that one was really because from there you can just you basically. Yep, your background yes. is yes. really loud. Yes. I'm gonna get you to mute for me. I do. Yeah, go ahead and mute for me. Um, is there anyone? Else? And then um. A lot of it, a lot. That's better. Okay, so is there anyone else who might have plans? Um, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. So for me, I want to um, do like elimination of debt stacking. So most of the debt is doesn't is not coming from me. So when I was younger, my mother took like some credit cards out in my name. Uh -huh. So I found out when I was 18 while I was in school. 
So what I'll, I've just been waiting so I can get a proper job to pay for all of that and stuff like that. So what I'm going to do is um, debt stacking, go from the lowest bill, like you said before, and then work my way up. And then last year uh, around like summertime, I, uh, me and my ex-husband had got a house bill. So that kind of lowered my credit. So what, what I'm going to do right now is go and check and see what's out in my name right now. And then I'm mm-hmm. going to go and do um, that elimination and the elimination stacking because most of the stuff that's in my name, I don't even have any credit cards, honestly, for myself. So I just wow. want to clean all that up for myself and then go from there. Okay. So I'm going to ask you a sensitive question. Is your mom still with us? Is she still here? Yes. Okay. So the reason you haven't tried to take it off of your credit is because it would fall back on her. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Yeah. That, that, that's interesting because, you know, as that's something we definitely do not recommend, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, parents to get credit in their children's names because of the exact situation you're going through. Um, so tell me this then what's your, you know, six month plan. So let's, let's say you might have, I don't know, 10, $15,000 in debt. Do you have extra money to do your debt stacking? You said, can you repeat that please? Mm -hmm. Do you have extra money or extra um, funnel, you know, of income, extra stream of of income to be able to debt stack? You have any free money? Now I'm putting that into place right now. Cause I have put all of that out of my mind because when I found out when I was at that age, I was mad. I'm with you. I was mad. And then, you know, you try to help a family member. So my brother and they're trying to help. So that's the thing when you grow up naive, but when you grow up naive, you learn a lot of stuff from experience. Mm-hmm. So that's why I was like, you know what? That's why I just kept going to school to get myself educated and all that kind of stuff to get a good job and stuff. I was like, whenever I get a good job, I'm going to just pay it off and don't worry about all of that because yeah. I don't want to um, mess that relationship up because of that. Right. So, and- but you know what that I found? I didn't know that you can change your uh, social security number. Yes, you can. Yep. You can definitely change your social security number. Um so in, in your case, you know, there's, you know, very little you can do. Um, I understand the anger you would have felt to find out that you had debt in your name. Um, so, you know, that's one of those detours in life that you get before you even <laughs> honestly get on the road, you have a detour. Um, and so, you know, that's kind of like being left with someone else's debt when you take on Yes, debt. and it's not even coming from me. When you say Lane Bryant, I was laughing. I don't even shop in the store, but I got a card in my name. <laughs> yes. So I don't have that much debt from me. I don't have that much debt on my, uh, it's just like student loans, but I did that myself. The student loans came from me. So I went yeah. to school. But um, the other stuff... Yeah, they're not yours, right? Yeah, but um, uh, and back in 2018, I was uh, with a nonprofit, and it was like working with women to help mm-hmm. start their um, business. So everything was free. They were just trying to make sure everything. Um, so it was like a program where they helped them with their um credit. They helped them with budgeting, and they had to you had to do like a financial analysis. So I already mm-hmm. did all of that, put all my debt and everything in order in order for us to go to the next step doing okay. the business plan and everything like that. So oh, I'm really kind of good. familiar with it already. Excellent. So um, this is bringing it back to my memory. Yeah. Like, yeah, you got to get that done. Yeah, I kind of, sometimes we need a little nudge to remind us because we just move on with life. And, you know, sometimes you get so upset about certain things, all you can do is move on. Yeah. And just, like, okay, I'm going forward, you know. Um, but, you know, thanks for sharing. I do hope you're able to get that kind of to go in your your way you know one of the um issues that can come up is co-signing you know my mom co-signed for um, my brother and I when we got our first cars and um now she knew I was going to pay mine 
she took a chance though on my brother, <laughs> you know. Um, but he pulled through. Stephen pulled through, you know, he was the baby of the family. So um, definitely spoiled, definitely used to me bailing him out. But um, he actually ended up paying for his car. My mom did not get burned on that. Uh, and, you know, when you're co-signing, when you think about it, when your kids get older, like my kids, I had to co-sign for my first, my oldest um, twin when he got his mm -hmm. place. And co-signing for him... I let them know, look, I already, I already know you have money. I already know you're responsible. But in case you flip out, let me explain something to you. You will not, you know, get away from this. And he was like, mom, no, I'm so excited. He went out and bought all new furniture. I mean, I was like, well, I can give you this and that. No, I want all new stuff. Woo. And um, I, probably about six months into it, I had to get him out of the lease. He said, mom, I'm tired of adulting. I don't know how y'all do it. Mm -mm. I'm going to move back home. And so he was the responsible one. So I did let him move back home, but he went, he's out on his own again. He, he went back and got another apartment. He was a little older, six months later, um, and got an apartment on his own. So it's always good to consider who you're getting credit for, debt for. because Lesson be learned. It's a lesson yes. learned from me because uh, I'm the youngest out of two older brothers. So I'm very responsible and my older brother, very irresponsible. Now, my middle brother, Lord have mercy. <laughs> that one right there, he's still learning. But uh, when I was in school, before I turned 18, I was helping my mama pay bills for my college, everything like that. I was very responsible. So mm -hmm. paying bills is not an issue for me, but it's just sometimes helping people out. Yes. That's not responsible. And you don't know that until you get into that situation. Yeah. When you're naive, you have a giving heart. You know, sometimes people do take advantage of you. But see, that's where we go to, um, you know, right here with this circle. We're not going to repeat this mistake. Once we learn that lesson, one good time, that's all it takes, right? One good time. And we're mm -hmm. not going to repeat that mistake anymore. So, now that we have taken the, the, you know, the roadmap to get out of debt, now we have to stay out of debt, right? And I recommend we do that by using our GPS, you know, we need to generate personal savings, okay? We want to make sure that we stay out of debt. And so I wanted us to kind of talk about what this all meant, right? We want to create a budget. So how many people have a budget? I try. I have my own app that I, I do it from. <laughs> okay. How's it going? Uh, well, it, it shows me exactly what I'm spending and what I'm, I'm I'm lacking on if I don't get that certain amount within that month. <laughs> so I think okay. I'm okay. Lately, which, I've been paying all of my bills on time. <laughs> oh, good. Now, which app is it? Uh, Prism. You can even okay. pay. You can even send bills off from there. P R I S M. Yep. Okay. Prism. Okay. Now I've heard of other things, but I haven't heard of Prism. So that's one in case anyone's interesting. Who else has a budget? I'm going to give everybody a chance to speak. Who else has a budget? And if I'm taking notes for Antonio, come on. No one else has a budget. I really don't budget? have a budget, but I do have an app. I have an okay. app that saves money. So I pay all my bills off then. I have like an app that saves money. So I don't have to physically go in there and save it. Automatically, when I get paid, it takes the money out for me. And they say, okay, today we save this amount today towards this or towards this. So I have like a uh, like different section that I have like ready day or whatever. And okay. it just saves money but, uh, without me doing it. Now, which app is that? Um, Digit. I think it's Digit. I think I've heard of Digit. Okay. How much was that app or was it free? It's free. Okay. And so is Digit one of the ones where when you go, when you spend money, it takes the balance and rounds it up and then takes it as savings? Um, I'm not sure, but I know once you accumulate so much that you save, it gives you some money because you save and you're using that app. 
And also they give you like a five dollar referral because if you say you refer a friend, then they give you like a like a like a little um a fee or like a reward for um sharing okay. it with a friend. Well put your link in the in the chat so that we can um see your we can, you know, if someone wants to sign up, they can definitely sign up. Because okay. you just told me two things. One, they give you money if you reach and save an amount. And then two, if you refer it, you get money. So yes. when Cash App was new, I sent it out to all of my friends. I, my friends would call me back and say, Sonny, did you send something or is this, is this a scam? I'm like, no, it's real. It's Cash App. It's a new app that will help you transfer money, blah, blah, blah. So because... I was like, all of us needed to know about that. You know, in middle America, you get so caught up in working, you might not know about the new technology. And back when it first started, nobody knew about it. A also, if you, um, if some people are um, bad about paying their bills on time, you can also add it in your, like your say, student loan. You can go in and add in your information for student loan. It will pay them directly mm -hmm. or your phone bill it can pay them directly nice so it has the bill pay function yes put it all you have well. to do is put your card in from all your bank information in there and it does it for you i like that i like that okay so i can't see the chat yet but you put your you put it in there i'm gonna do it right now okay okay now does prism give referral inf referral bonuses I'm not sure, but I'm checking now so that I can send you guys the link. Okay, a excellent. Now, who else has a budget or an app they use? I know we are not this willy-nilly people. Nobody wants to share about it. Man, I guess that's, that's leaving me to talk about mine. Um, so I do have a budget. Um, and I have a budget for my business. I have a budget for my personal. And with my personal, I know like all of us should know how much money it takes to pay our bills every month. Does everyone know the amount of money they need to generate to pay all of their bills? I've Just seen it. I'm sorry. I've seen it every month, but it, it varies from week to week because of the way that I have it. But I'm pretty sure if I sit down and just calculate it out, I'll know. So yes and no. <laughs> okay. Help? Does your app allow you to download to an Excel file? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Yeah. If, it doesn't, if it doesn't, your bank does. And your bank will have something called a CSV file. It's an Excel file, but it's called a CSV file. Mm -hmm. And it's an easy way to download. And once you download it into Excel, it opens up and you can sort and make, build an idea of your budget from that. You can separate your months out, filter. I'd be happy to show you once you figured out if your bank has it or your app. Okay, it's that'd very, be awesome. very easy to determine the budget. Okay. And it's something we all need to have. Um, and so with my budget, I know, you know, we, we all have those bills that come in like every quarter or every six months, right? And so then the question is, how do you budget for those? So I build them into my big budget, but you really want to consider your monthly budget by dividing that total number. So that you're putting away some each month for that budget, that that thing that comes and, you know, um, periodically, like getting your dog groomed, paying to get the the the, gra the grass cut in the summer, stuff like that. Um, so for those that don't have a budget, can you tell me why you don't have a budget? Is it that you keep it in your head? Okay, I get it. I get it. Nobody's... Who is that? I just added the um, the link in the chat, and okay. also at the bottom of the future, 
um, if you have a checking account or a savings account, it would tell you your balance as well. So you don't have to go into your checking account and see how much do I have in there? It will tell you your balance from there. I like that. I like that. Okay, so our next, our next conversation is going to be about passive income. Okay, and so Antonio has been talking a lot about passive income. So who wants to tell and share about their passive income? What type of, what type of you know, income, what type of business, what type of um, sales funnel, what is it? Some people already have passive income. They're, they're in uh, Riqueza, right? So who wants to share? I am telling you, I don't. Well, I'll, I'm sure. I'm sure about Rakesa. So with that, with Rakesa, you know, you, the passive income is anytime you refer someone and they get uh, started at the sophomore, junior, or senior level, you get a fifty percent commission. And then, um, if you are an active student and on one of the paid levels yourself, you get monthly in you get a uh, monthly income, which we call success income. It's residual income. And it, it varies depending on the level that uh, the person that you referred every time they renew their membership, you get, mm -hmm. you get residual income that way. So that's how that passive income is generated. Yeah, but that can add up to be a pretty penny. Yes, it can. You know, that's money you wouldn't have otherwise. Right. And, and it's, um, you know, a reward for inviting awesome people to learn about ATS and our education that we're providing, all the classes. I mean, it really, I can't wait because I'm going to take the cryptocurrency class. I saw a couple of others I really wanted to take. So, you know, you can't beat that and get paid for it. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any income that they're getting that's passive that they're not working at to get? I guess Phil doesn't want to share about the millions he's making, but it's okay. You can keep the stock market quiet. Uh, I guess that's okay. Um, so, you know, when it comes to passive income, that's the best type of income. Unearned income is the best type of income you can have because you haven't really exerted your, your you know, energy to create that income. Now, I do have plans for passive income um, in the future to be able to keep, you know, some of the things going that I want to do. So another thing you can do to, you know, set your GPS to generate personal savings is to start a business. You know, I have tax clients that I ask every year, you know, have you considered starting a business? It could lower your taxes. You could write off, you know part of your phone bill, your internet bill. You could, you know, depending on what business you choose, there are lots of other things. You can write off all your expenses for the business. Um, I believe everybody needs a second business. They need something on the side. If you're working a nine to five, you need to have something else generating money for you. So if you haven't started um, a business or maybe you know a family friend or a, a young adult, Talk to them about starting a business. It's a very good way to um, help make sure you meet your bills. Now, in addition to that, you know, there are those of us now who have multiple businesses. Now, who has more than one business? Okay. So I know that's something that's a, a principle that we have to have multiple businesses, multiple um, lines that we can pull money from. I wanted to find out who can talk to us about sales funnels. Explain sales funnels to us. I've done a whole lot of talking. I need no way to that. Is anybody comfortable in sharing about sales funnels? Well, I know sales funnels is a, is a great way to receive passive income because it's a, I hear Antonio say it all the time. It's a uh, an employee that works 24/7, 365. Doesn't need day uh, days off. Doesn't need to take a break. Doesn't need to do you know. And so um, it's a great way to uh, mm -hmm. like to get that passive income because it's it's steady 
it's steady going. Um, even with Antonio has a sales funnel with the uh, richest man in the trash can. You know, he, he built it and it just, it doesn't take time off. And so um, with that sales funnel, you That's can, right. it's, man, with this sales funnel, you can continue to have repeat customers and, and, and new customers every single time. Because right. all, you know, once they get, once they get, see that free product. Oh, all you need is my name, phone number, and email. Oh, got you. <laughs> so, got you. I can do that. I've done it many times myself. Yeah. And you continue, if you, when you continue to add value to the person, that's when the sales funnel, when you benefit. Because if you just yes. decide, oh, I'm going to build a sales funnel so I can get this money, you got to add value. <laughs> so people you, want to thank you with money. That's right. You got to add value. You have to be giving them something they want something that they may not know they want because they haven't considered that need yet. So you definitely have to be giving them something. Um, is there um, any questions? I know I kind of let us talk as we went along, but are there any questions for tonight? Um, I have one. So do you have like an example of how you set up your, um, your budget? Because I've heard different ways of doing it, and I've heard different ways of how other people do it. But I just want to know if is there is there like a, a easy way to do it in in, in a, a app or some type of um, um, template that you have that you just plug in the numbers and it automatically generate it, and voila, you have that month's budget. I sure do. I have um, Excel spreadsheets that make it really easy. Um, to create your budget, to track your spending, um, because you want that piece where you're tracking it yourself. A lot of times when it becomes automated, you don't really think about it as much. And I'm guilty of that myself. You know, once it became automated and you start relying just on your bank, on, on our apps, you kind of spend, you pay less attention to it. But the whole point of a budget is for you to manage it. It doesn't do us any good if we don't manage it, right? So I do have spreadsheets for your business and your personal. And you can just get with me for those. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? What about suggestions? No question, mm -hmm. but I'm glad that you mentioned automated because I use Mint app, but I am very guilty of ignoring those notifications. They pop up on my phone. I just swipe and keep on going. So maybe I do need a spreadsheet to get my life together so I can stop, you know, just out here all willy nilly with my I money. I need to stop Mint too. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread when it came out. Oh, you categorize it for me? Oh. I love right. it. Right. And when it tells me, oh, you overspend this area, I'm like, oh, okay, girl, that's no problem. And I keep on going, you know. Keep so. it moving. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I had to stop. Man, I took it off my phone. I was like, okay, this is not working for me. And, and you know, there was no accountability for me. And, and actually, I kind of lost track. And so I said, okay, this isn't helping me. Okay, so I, I went and took it off. Um, are there any suggestions for others that anyone might have on how they could um, get out of debt or improve their GPS? Um, maybe there might be some things that we need to consider. Awesome. So I have uh, this, is someone you speaking? Know yeah, I'm sorry. So there is another um, app too. There is an app called um, Darn It. Uh, it's a it's a calendar. Let me see if I can find it. Um, that's called. Well, anyway, you can put you can input whatever you purchased or you bought that that day, and then you can put it in there, and it'll gener generate the amount. And then that way you'll be able to see literally everything you did that month or that week 
it's a little tedious. You know, you have to be uh, consistent. Like, if you purchase something, just go ahead and just put it in there real quick. Um, oh. But I, but I think it's pretty nice if you just want to see that day where your money went opposed to waiting. Mm -hmm. Because we don't always put everything in there. Like, if we went to a Dunkin' Donuts, this little $5 here, or we went to the store, this little 2 or $3 here. We don't really count it. So you don't really know, and you have been to spend like $100 that day and not even realize it, you know? Yeah. Now so, tell me, uh, who, who still takes money out of the bank? Who carries cash? My husband make me to carry at least $20, and I hide it in my glove compartment on rainy days just in case I run out the house and forget my purse or my wallet. Yep, I, I do $20. Who else carries cash? And how much do you carry? When I have cash, it's because my grandmother gives it to me to go buy something for. That's the only time I have cash. <laughs> yes, yes, I get you. Anybody else carry cash? So I would carry cash. Um, when the twins lived at home, I always kept about forty to sixty dollars in cash. Um, but then I'd lose track of how much money I had, and I'd be like, "I thought I had forty. I would end up forgetting that I gave some money to the kids for stuff. So, but with them gone, I just keep a twenty in my wallet in case anything. You know, like you said, you don't have your card when you go out. Um, but it's always good to have a little something. You know, our parents and grandparents taught us about that, right? So now I have something for you to listen to. Okay, so I found it. And it's One second. Called... Okay. Okay, so were y'all able to hear that? No. You couldn't hear it? No. Oh, no. man. I have to figure out why. I had this neat commercial um, that had Stephen Walker speaking on it. And so, you know, he has a deep voice, so it was much better. Um, so you said you, <laughs> you said you found the app? I did. Um, it's called uh, Dollar Bird um, Dollar Calendar. Bird. Yep, just like how it sounds, a dollar and bird, me, Dollar Bird Calendar. Let me look that up to see what that looks like. And so what do you, what can you do with it? So you just go in and you'll put in like, like I said, purchases that you're probably bought, like say you went to uh, Burger King and you paid for uh, a meal for $6.89. And then you went to Walgreens and you purchased them for $3 and change, or mm -hmm. uh, you took money out of the bank and you, you know, just whatever you did that day, if you want to kind of calculate what it was you spent that day. Okay. Um, you could just plug it in or you could just plug in your bills. You have a part on there if you want to put, if you're paying your bills and how many times. So um, a couple of things I put in there that I'll probably get gas um, twice, a, uh, every two weeks. And so mm -hmm. I put in there like $25 times two, uh, you know, uh, okay. maybe every Friday. And so it'll calculate for you how much all of that is by the time the end of the month. So I thought that was pretty neat. And I then, do see it. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's another app I found too called Beef Frugal app. And that app, you basically, when you go in, it's different cash. It's a cash book and different coupons for different sto stores that you may have that's your favorite, like Adidas and Macy's and DSW and... Um, under Armour, Bloomingdale's, Sam's Club. It's just like a, a a little app that has all type of little coupons that you can get if you want to go to a store to get 20% off or Walgreens. Okay. Yeah, it's called Beef Frugal. 
Okay, be frugal. I, I seem to recall that off of one of the, um, I was on this m mommy money savings group and they talked about that. They would always pass out sales and different things. And I remember that. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So were there any other questions? I'm gonna copy this information about Digit. No questions from me. I just want to say you did a wonderful job explaining everything. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, she did. Oh, you're so welcome. I'm glad that um, I was invited. Thank you for um, ATS for inviting me out to kind of share a little bit about um, how we can get out of debt and stay out of debt and, you know, be debt free. So I'm giving you a roadmap. If you would like to get the um, presentation, just let me know. Thank you. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if we could unmute our mics and give Miss Sadia Douglas a round of applause for a wonderful Ooh, Good job. Thank you. Yay. Thank you. I don't know what LeVon got going on. It's all right. It's all right. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you again, Miss Sadia for all of your financial knowledge because yeah some of us we didn't we didn't want to put our stuff out there like that you know we didn't, I, saw it. I saw it I tried, I tried. <laughs> you know you was asking question how many of y'all budget uh, we got need we need to but we <laughs> 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 so but they call y'all to the front pew <laughs> <laughs> thank you again Miss Sadi a wonderful job Thank you, Thank you. All, uh, all of you for joining us tonight on Integrity Leadership Call. Join us tomorrow for the daily morning meeting at 8 a.m. Central, 9 a.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. Pacific. Again, thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful evening. You can plant better. You can dominate. Take care. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. 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 Bye.